Okay, so I bought me a new toy, this Carvrite machine. Oh boy, this Carvrite machine, a couple words of warning. One, if you're going to get one of these things, okay, here's the scoop. It's a comp somewhat complicated, somewhat precision machine with stepper motors and tooth belts and this thing going up and down that really creates the carvings and sandpaper belts moving it at a certain speed and measuring the length of the board. There's a lot of stuff in it. And here's the thing. It's grinding up. Uh, it's making sawdust. It's just making sawdust. And sawdust goes all over everywhere. And a lot of little things, you know, seem to go wrong when they get coated with sawdust. Especially things like little micro switches. Now, I'm used to micro switches and I'm used to taking things apart. So it wasn't that big of a deal. Kind of a pain, but not that big of a deal. But if you're. You know, if you're timid about it and timid about taking things apart, ooh, you're going to be having a lot of issues with this machine, let me tell you. Anyway, so I bought it, I don't know, a week ago or so, uh, used, and uh, maybe two weeks ago, I don't know. And I'm a cheapskate, and, uh, but it didn't have a rock chuck on it. That's the rock chuck there that you see. And I was reading in the forums and stuff, thank goodness for the internet, about how great the rock chuck is. And you can kind of see why. Here's the original QC chuck, and look at how wide that is. That's a lot of, you know, I, I compare it to unsprung weight on a car. When you got something that far from the center of gravity, the, the, the centrifugal forces, when this thing is spinning at 20,000 RPM, have to be tremendous. And uh, you can see how much wider and fatter and deeper and just more complicated it is than the rock chuck. I mean, there has to be springs and ball bearings and all kinds of stuff inside of this thing and all kinds of stuff that can throw it off balance. And so I thought, okay, let's do the rock chuck, but I was deathly afraid because of all the stuff I read about how I was going to get this darn thing out of there. Well, I'm a cheapskate again, as I said, so, and, and sometimes being cheap is being stupid. But what I did, let me take the, the camera over here, was, because I understand that you have to heat it up, right? So I made a little heating device, and here it is. And what I did was I took, you know, one of these things. I, I committed to it, right? I mailed, mailed for it, and so I said, okay, to heck with it. I'm going to take that eighth inch, whatever it is, cutting, cutting bit out of there. So I heated it up a little bit with the torch, and, and actually I had to use uh, the vise, really, to get those uh, Allen screws loose enough. Popped it out, popped the bit out, and found one of these things. Okay, so I stuck one of these things into there, but, of course, there was a gap in there. This part here has to be heated up because that's the thing that is closest to the QC threads. The threads are in here and you want that and that thing has to come up and almost bottom out up here or top out up here uh, in order to heat everything to, to melt that uh, red Loctite that they use so liberally on these things. So what I did, I took this and I took some of these nuts, just 7 eighths nuts. Come to find out the machine is metric I believe. But, uh, you know, these don't fit on a lag bolt, so I drilled through the nuts, got them to fit on it. And then I figured, ah, to heck with it, so I cut the lag bolt off a little bit and put a little other point on it and screwed it into this piece of wood. I figured, you know what, <laughs> let's put a piece of wood on it so we don't burn ourselves. So, I put like two or three little nuts in there and... Uh, and tighten them up and tighten uh, those Allen set screws. And then, you know, I, inject, I, I heated it up. Now, the first time I heated it up with a propane torch and got a little bit hot, didn't quite work. Uh, well, actually, the first time I had uh, jimmied a little uh, square tool like this one uh, that wasn't nearly strong enough, and boom, it broke. And so, and it was a heck of a time fishing out that little piece of square metal. 
So I ordered one of these from Ron. He sent it. Um, so that was cool. <laughs> $15, but cool. And I didn't buy any of the flat wrenches, so I made one. Now that's cheap. Luckily, I have a welder and stuff. Uh, I wouldn't suggest you make one. But I had one, see? And I couldn't buy just one from Ron, I don't believe. And because uh, I have this for my table saw, so I figured, okay, I'll just make something. And so I made this thing. You have to have two when you install the chuck. Anyway, so what I did is I stuck this thing in the vise after I after I got this all assembled. Stuck it in the vise, heated it up with a propane torch, stuck it in this thing. You can see how it almost bottoms out here. Now this was on the machine, and uh, 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 tried to do it, you know, with just kind of like jerking motions as a as uh, Ron recommends. Didn't work. So, you know, I popped it out with the handy-dandy uh, removal tool that the previous owner hadn't sent to me. Popped it out, put it back in the vise, and this time I got it really hot. And uh, to be honest, I, I used a pro, a, uh, an acetylene torch on it. Um, I think you might have gone, might not have, I might have overheated it a little bit, maybe. But I got this glowing red. Uh, tried to keep it off of the little bit holder. Got it glowing red. And uh, went over, stuck it in the machine, waited for, I don't know, probably 20 or 30 seconds for the heat to permeate from there through that little piece of metal out to the threads. And boom, 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 jammed it, jammed it free. And, and the rest, as Ron said, is easy. Um, I did have to go buy some blue Loctite, I believe. I read somewhere where he recommends blue Loctite for putting the the main part on the uh, spindle and then you just screw the bottom part of the chuck in there and use the two here you use the two uh, flat wrenches and uh, uh, tighten it down anyway that's that's the way I did it and it's carved very well um, the cable certainly doesn't get hot and everything seems go except for all of the little ancillary problems and error messages that come up and I'll tell you what, I've had it apart twice. I've carved two projects. So that's the name of that tune. Good luck with your carve right.